Hello everyone and welcome to this quick blender tutorial where we're gonna see how to model this little play the like barrel from scratch. By the end of the video you'll know how to transform Blender's basic startup cube into this simple barrel shape thanks to the powers of the bevels of course but also using the array and boolean modifiers. Alright so let's hop into Blender and start by working on the core feature of our barrel, the vertical planks that form the body of the object and are placed in a circle. To begin with, let's bring our cube a bit off the origin of the scene, and after tabbing into edit mode, scale it down to make it thinner along this direction, and get our base wood plank. We can also bring it up so that its bottom face rests on the XY plane, and we have a nice pivot point for our final object. While we're at it, let's press Ctrl plus R to bring up the loop cut tool, subdivide our mesh vertically, and push these vertices outwards to make the slightly rounded curve of our barrel. Then, if we want to smooth out this curve, we can reuse the manual bevel tool that we discussed in the first episode of the series. So let's press Ctrl plus B, scroll up to add a segment to the bevel, and drag our mouse to make it bigger. You see that this instantly improves the curvature of our plank. As always, feel free to add more segments to make it even rounder if you want, but remember that the more edges, the heavier you model. Ok, with this basic plank model done, the next step is to repeat it along a circle to really get our cylinder-like barrel shape. To do this, the first important point is to make sure that our plank's origin is in the middle of our soon-to-be circle. For that, because our barrel is centered on the origin of the scene, at the same location as our scene 3D cursor, we can go back to object mode and change the origin point of our object to the 3D cursor position via this menu. Now you see that if we rotate our object, it rotates relative to this middle point. So we could just duplicate our object and rotate it multiple times, like this. But this isn't great, cause it means that any modifications we make on the original mesh will need to be redone on the other ones, and that we might have some issues adjusting all these rotations properly to make a nice circle. Instead, a better solution here is to use Blender's Array Modifier. In short, this modifier allows us to create multiple copies of an object that are all linked, so they dynamically reflect the changes that you make on the original model. Plus, these copies can be offsetted from the initial reference with various modes. Typically, in our case, we want to change the mode from the default Relative Offset option to the Object Offset one. This lets us compute the position and rotation of the copies based on the transform of another object in the scene, which can be something as simple as an empty anchor. So let's create a new empty object at the origin of the scene and assign it as the object controlling our Planck's Array modifier offset. For now, because our empty anchor has a default transform, it doesn't do anything, so the copy is actually overlapping with the original. But you see that if I move it from the origin, I scale it or rotate it, then my Planck's duplicate gets instantly offsetted. For our specific use case, that's great, because it means that if we rotate our empty anchor and then increase the number of copies in the Planck's Array modifier, we instantly get a circle of Planck's that is extremely easy to tweak and adjust to our liking. Alright, so we now have a cool base barrel shape. To improve this model, we can then add some metal rings at the top and the bottom. Those are the metallic pieces that keep all our wood planks together. Here, because our first object is using an array modifier, we need to make sure to go back to object mode so that they are not in the same object as the body of the barrel. Otherwise, they'll just get copied to by the modifier. But anyway, for those rings, we can start with a cylinder. If you want a smoother curve, don't hesitate to slightly increase the number of vertices when you create it. Then we'll select the top and bottom faces, inset them by pressing I, and finally press X to delete them. Be careful to remove just the faces and not the vertices. Now to fill in this entire ring with faces, we can simply use Alt plus click to select those two rings of edges, and then press Ctrl plus E to bring up the edge tool menu that has a bridge edge loops option. Ok, we have a basic ring shape that we can now scale down to fit our barrel, and then duplicate to create the other one at the bottom. If we're satisfied with the spacing of our planks and the global shape of the barrel body, we can even apply our array modifier by hovering it with our mouse and pressing Ctrl plus A, 
and then select all three objects to join them as one with Ctrl plus J. We can also add a top face to close our barrel by going into edit mode and adding a circle element in our mesh that we fill by pressing F. Now to turn this basic shape into the smooth version that I showed you at the beginning of the video, we'll use the same trick as in the first episode, so we'll give our object a bevel modifier, use the vertex group based limit method, and manually select the edges that we want to bevel by assigning them to our vertex group. For the top face, we can reuse the knife tool with K to manually split it into planks, bring down the middle edges, and apply some manual bevels to round off the other edges. At this point, you should already have a pretty nice barrel model, and depending on the kind of variants that you want to make, you might want to slap some materials on it, and then keep this model as is, as a first variation. But just for kicks, let's do one last extra thing. Let's explore how to use Blender's Boolean modifier to easily cut a circular hole in our barrel, either on the side or at the top. So, Boolean operations are a particular molding tool that allow you to mix a reference object with another target object or a collection of targets to create a new geometry that would otherwise be quite hard to model. In short, you just make the reference and the target overlap, and then you can do one of three things. The union operation merges the objects together, the difference operation cuts holes in the reference by subtracting the target object from it, and the intersection operation keeps only the parts that are inside both the reference and the target object. So typically in our case, we can use the difference operation to easily cut a round hole in our barrel. All we have to do is create a cylinder object of the size of the hole to make, have it go through the barrel mesh where we want the cut to be, so for example at the top or in the middle of a plank, and finally use a boolean modifier on the barrel object. We'll pick our cylinder as a target and set our operation to be a difference. Now if we hide our cylinder, you see that we indeed made a hole in our barrel with just a couple of clicks that has just the right shape and the right position. By the way, if it looks a bit weird, you may want to play with the fast versus exact mode. But now what's really great with this tool is that as long as the modifier is active, moving the target object, so here the cylinder, instantly updates the result of the operation, cause we haven't baked the operation. So we can try to move our cylinder or rotate it in various ways, scale it down or up to change the size of the hole, and all of that directly impacts the modifications that it would make on our barrel object. Then once we're ok with how it looks, we can just apply our boolean modifier and destroy the cylinder target object. And that's it, we now have a nice round hole in our barrel. But anyway, there you go! You now know how to transform Blender's startup cube into a simple cute barrel shape. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few things. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As usual, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.